اهلا بكم متابعينا في حلقه جديده من برنامج شرايحة عليا اليوم عندي حوار جدا شيق مع طبيب السرطان بالطب البديل دكتور توماس لودي دكتور لودي عنده مصح في تايلاند يشتغل معظم شغله في تايلاند ويتطرق لعلاج مرض السرطان بالطب البديل فحواري معاه اليوم بيكون باللغه الانجليزيه ولكن تقدرون تشوفونه معرب بيكون في تعريب تحت ولكن لازم تدخلون له من الاعدادات عشان تحصلون الترجمه العربيه Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Lodi. I wanted uh, today's conversation to be about a specific topic, which is preventive mastectomies and hysterectomies that are done for um, people who carry the gene, the cancer gene. Because I see this a lot, people are being pressured um, by their health professionals to do these um, operations in order to avoid the possibility of cancer that might or might not happen. So let's talk about the role of genes in actually acquiring the, the disease itself. Okay, sure. That's uh, actually a very important topic. The, um, the gene you're referring to is called the BRCA gene, BRCA, yeah. and uh, Ange Angelina Jolie made it famous. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so it stands for breast cancer, breast cancer gene. BRCA is what it is. It, um, but anyway, the gene that it's being referred to is, uh, everyone has it. This gene is necessary f to repair double-stranded DNA. So during the, uh, uh, pro the process of replication, when a cell is dividing and re replicating, um, mistakes happen. And, that's, and so what needs to happen is it needs to be repaired appropriately. So that doesn't happen. These, now, the double-stranded DNA also, you know, so the cell's dividing. It's not dividing unnaturally. It's dividing naturally. Yeah. So if this repair mechanism is not adequate, then of course you're going to wind up with broken, you know, you know with, with a missing gene here and a missing gene there, etc. So uh, the, uh, and, and one of the consequences is different forms of cancer. Okay. Now we inherit one chromosome for each gene from each parent. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, now it's not a X-linked or sex-related genetic uh, condition. It's not like only women get it. Men get it. And a woman can get this gene from her father as much as from her mother. So it's not at all sex-related. Um, but anyway, so let's say you get this gene, you inherit it. In other words, your, your parent, one of your parents has this uh, mutation on the gene that repairs double-stranded DNA. And um, now, in order for that gene to be fully disabled, the other chromosome must be um, uh, mutated. And uh, when a mutation occurs during the lifetime of the person, it's called a somatic mutation. So you have an inherited mutation and a somatic mutation. So in order for the BRCA phenomenon to really result in full-on risk of high, of breast and ovarian and, and, and uterine cancers, you must have both, which means that you inherit the one and then you have to get a somatic mutation during your lifetime. How do we get somatic mm. mutations? By living health unhealthy lifestyles. Mm. So, so basically you're triggering it. Even if you had the susceptibility, you don't necessarily have the trigger that will exactly. make it active. Exactly. So when you read in the textbooks and you read it, and you read it in the research, you'll see that they, they consider uh, the BRCA gene as, is one of those genes that skips generations. In other words, they saw it in one, but how could a gene skip a generation? If you think about yeah. it, it makes no sense because, you know, if you give it to your daughter and you had it, now she doesn't have it, but her, her you know, it just, it doesn't make sense. It, it just doesn't make sense. So the reason it skips generations, it doesn't just skip generations, is if you live a healthy lifestyle. So what should you do if you don't have this gene? Mm -hmm. Live a healthy lifestyle. What should you do if you do have this gene? Yeah. Live a healthy lifestyle. So it always comes down to the same thing. So anyway, the other thing to be uh, to, 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 to realize about this is that the risk of breast cancer is increased if you have both chromosomes mutated. The risk of ovarian, uterine, pancreatic, and colon cancer. So if you want to start removing all the organs that are potentially at risk, yeah. there will be nothing left. 
You'll have no pancreas, no colon, no no breasts, no ovaries, no uterus, <clears throat> and basically you won't be able to live without the pancreas. Yeah. So it's not possible. And unfortunately, it got famous. It got a lot of attention from the Angelina thing yeah. um, and and a lot of people in fact when we looked at the statistics the amount of surgeries that went up after that was incredible statistically that's significant very sad. but that plays on the fear the role of fear right so basically yeah. I'm not in control of my own health something else outside of me or inside of me because of genetics is in control of which direction my health takes so um, that's not a way of, of life to begin with. You can't, be, you can't go about life believing that you are completely uh, helpless in terms of which direction your health takes. No, no, and it's not true. Yes. Yeah, yes. you know, and, but, you're, but you're right. Most people think that they are a victim of their genes. Yeah. You know, you're born, you're born with it and that's it. You know, you, so, yeah. well, then I might as well smoke. I yeah. might as well drink. I might as well do all those things if, I, if, I have, if I'm a victim. Yeah. And what about all the people who do carry the gene that never get cancer? So it, that means they must have done something else that prevented them because they carried the same gene. Exactly, exactly. So yeah. in other words, having this gene doesn't mean anything. It just means you need to be a little more vigilant about living a healthy lifestyle than the guy that doesn't. That's yeah. all. But, but, but it's still the same. You know, you, how many people get, what percentage of people with breast cancer did, had that gene? Very small less than three percent mm, okay mm. so the, the the other 97 percent of the people that are getting breast cancer didn't have the gene so I'm not worried about the gene my gene I'm what I'm worried about if, 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 if I'm a woman and I'm worried about breast cancer yeah. I'm worried about what are all the causes that result in breast cancer and we know what they are they have to do with lifestyle mm -hmm. so again we get back to the same thing and you know just obscuring everything with all these different quote facts and unquote scientific facts all that does is make people bewildered, confused, yeah. and they think I'm a victim, and the only one that can help me are the guys in the white coats. Yes, yes. And uh, what I'm worried about is the, the whole approach of before we treat it, before we prevent it, let's cut it. I mean, that's, it's not an approach that is sustainable even, you know? It does, it's not an approach that even goes with the first do no harm oath that, that, uh, that doctors take. I mean, I had a client who, said that her mother had breast cancer and every time she goes to the doctor she dreads the visits to the doctor with her mother she's fine she goes with her mother to the doctor she dreads the visits because every time she goes the doctor corners her and her four sisters into doing a preventive mastectomies because they are the gene carriers and it d just makes no sense to me on any level you know that that he won't even have a discussion with her about her diet uh, and it's right. we're talking about cutting things up no, no, it's crazy, and and you know, just just to just to give a, another another perspective and keep this in context, I had a woman diagnosed with ovarian cancer who came to my clinic, <clears throat> and her diagnosis was occurred ten years after she had her ovaries removed. Hmm. Imagine. You didn't have ovaries. Yeah. So it doesn't. So, so what are the what what's the percentage of of prevention then that is is something to be discussed as well, right? Exactly. Exactly. So you yeah. cut it out. Did you solve the problem? Yeah. What we have to realize about cancer is that the only difference between any cancer mm -hmm. is the first word. Breast cancer, colon cancer, brain cancer, yeah. uh, pancreatic cancer. The first word, and the first word tells you only one thing, location. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's the second word is cancer, and that means it has to fit certain criteria. So that process that's going on is going on in the body, and it just happens to manifest, in this case, in the breast or the colon or the pancreas. Why is it manifesting in that particular organ? And if I didn't have that organ, what would happen? Well, then it would manifest somewhere else. Yeah. It's like I have a, you know, if I pick all the poison apples, like I've said before, you know, next spring I'm still going to have a poisoned crop. Yeah, because it's the swamp that's carrying all this stuff. Exactly. It doesn't matter what, what it is that it's carrying. It's just carrying something. Right. Right, so, so what's your opinion on the whole approach then? Because surely um, people who are suggesting that to patients, they also have the patient's best interest. I mean, they didn't go into this presumably just to do the cutting up. So they genuinely believe that there is some benefit to that. Where does that come from? Where does that whole theory come from that your genes are in control and you have no say and you can't control it in any way with, with diet and lifestyle? Yeah, well, that, that actually, that theory is... Uh, has has literally been disproven at this point, and so, however, um, as you know, in science, um, things move very, very slowly. So, uh, 
I, I think it was uh, Linus Pauling or Einstein. I forget. I wish I remembered the quote about science and how things move. But in, in any case, this model, the model that the genes are in control, is a sort of a Newtonian view of biology. We used to think that the DNA was the head or the 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 the, the, the uh, the executor of the cell and it decided what to do and made the decisions. Yeah. This is not true. What we now know is that all the decisions are made by the membrane. The membrane has at least 100,000 receptors and pores and it's in touch with, 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 with its environment. And that environment is everything that you've eaten, drinking, and everything that you haven't eliminated and your hormones and et cetera and all that stuff that's in there. Those are all the things stimulating these receptors which is signaling the mechanics of the cell to do their thing. Now, when what is the nucleus then? What is the DNA? The DNA is the parts department. The DNA doesn't know what to do. The D, if imagine the DNA is hiding inside the cell, it doesn't know there's too much glucose that it needs to turn down its production of insulin receptors. It doesn't know that. It needs to get the signal from the membrane. So the membrane says, slow down your production, change your genetic expression, you know, or uh, you're getting, uh, there's a lot of estrogen, so it's time to turn on this gene and turn off that gene. So the only way that the, 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 the nucleus knows what to do is when it gets its information from the membrane. And so the membrane is really the brains. And I get, to give you another idea of that, we know that if you remove the brains of any organism, it dies. You take the brains out of a dog, it'll die. The brain out of a human, it'll die. Any organism, you remove the brain, it will die. Well, you remove the nucleus of a cell and it doesn't die. It lives for three to four months until it runs out of parts. Now, interesting. You remove all the receptors. You shave the receptors off of the membrane so that the membrane cannot function and the cell dies. Hmm. So again, where's the brain? So really, we have to shift. So what we're, when we're talking about not the genetics of the cell, but rather the things that influence the genetic expression. You know, the genes don't know what to do. They're yeah. just there. The, so, the, the, so that which influences the genetics is what's called epigenetics. And the field of epigenetics is growing tremendously. And really, anybody, like all the PhDs now, have already made the, the, the switch. They now know that that cellular activity is determined by the environment around it. It's still the old school doctors who aren't reading up who don't know that and they're still coming across that the gene is 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 the king but this is old newtonian it's like it's like not it's like saying it's like as if einstein didn't come out saying that hey guess what energy energy equals matter times the speed of light squared mm -hmm. you know so anyway it's it's old school and if your doctor doesn't know that then what you need to do it's very important since your life depends on it is get educated i can send in some articles so that they'll be available for you you read them. If they're too difficult, get a friend to help you. But your doctor will be able to read it. So when your doctor tells you to do something, you need to show him that you've done your homework. And that's going to either, he's either going to do his homework or uh, get angry and send you away because he's mm -hmm. embarrassed that he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, the truth is that, and this is a beautiful truth, and that is we are in control. It is what we put in and, and how nicely and quickly we eliminate. Um, I just want to give you one other example. There was a guy... Uh, in, in the 1930s, he, he wanted to see h how long an organ could live if there was no waste. So he took chicken hearts, and I don't know if you've ever, in biology, you had a heart out of the body, it's still beating. Yeah. You cut it in half, both sides are beating. You cut them, and now you got four beating. You know, they keep beating. Well, he took these chicken hearts and put them in cups with nu nutrients. Okay, and every day completely cleaned out all the waste, so there was never any accumulation of waste. After 28 years, he abandoned the experiment, and the hearts were still alive. Oh wow! Chicken, chickens don't live 28 years. So what is the message there? The message is 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 that if you actually could eliminate and never accumulate waste, who knows how long we would live? Mm -hmm. Then all the biblical things about before the flood, the average age was 912 years just might be true you know it might not just be scripture so um, anyway the point is this it's the accumulation of waste and all of its consequences that result in what we call diseases especially cancer okay so, so it's what's not your a definition of what accumulates waste so basically us eating food that is not fully nutritious that we take some of it and then have to excrete the rest so that's that's the, the theory at least yeah right well that's that's part of it that's what the, there's that waste right there's the waste of, of that which see 
we can we can define food simply as food is that which can be con converted into flesh and blood. Yeah. And non-food as that which has to be eliminated or you'll die and it's called poison. So yeah. there's food versus poison. Yeah. Everything, even an apple, an organic apple, is going to have some part of it that needs to be excreted. Yeah. Nothing is a pure food except mana, you know, perhaps, you know. But th there's no pure food. So anyway, everything has a, a something that has to be eliminated. Now, if you are constipated, if you uh, are you know, you, you're not drinking enough, you're dehydrated, so you're not urinating enough. If you're not exercising and you're not excreting through your sweat, you know, there's lots of reasons not to excrete. As we age, our organs of elimination get slowed down. If you also, if you're not exercising, you're not breathing enough, because one of our ways of expelling waste is through our lungs. So all of these things conspire to the accumulation or you, you decrease the elimination of it, right? Yeah. And now, especially if you're overeating and you're eating too frequently, so now you're getting more and more and more of it, right? And then the other thing is this, that we're all, all of this stuff is what we're talking about is organ detoxification and uh, blood detoxification, et cetera. But what we, what we haven't considered yet is intracellular detoxification. Yeah. That is all of the waste that accumulates in cells, metabolic thing. They, the, the, the cells do not cleanse themselves internally until we stop eating. When we're eating and there's a steady flow of nutrients, the cells are busy. They don't have time. The minute we stop eating, the cells clean house. One of the beauties and benefits and blessings of sleep is that we finally stop eating, you know, when we go to sleep, you know, so that's really an important thing to do. So anyway, as important as eating is, it's equally as important not to eat for periods it's of time. Fasting, you, yeah. Yeah. So fasting does internal cleansing of cells and all that. Stuff. So there are ways of eliminating the waste, but we don't. So as we get older, we accumulate waste, we accumulate waste, and then we call that aging. You know, why is it that the guy in Machu Picchu at 110 is able to father a child? And, and, and why is it yeah. that I've got 50-year-olds asking me for Viagra? What's going on? You know, there's something wrong here, you know, and it is the accumulation of waste. It's lifestyle. So, I did So, that's probably I, even more prevention than, that's a lot more prevention than mastectomies because mastectomies might just remove the suspected organ without cleaning out the swamp really it, it you still have exactly. the environment that will build anything else eventually it'll it'll, it'll produce cancer else. somewhere yeah it'll yeah. it'll produce you know if you've got the environment for cancer it's going to be it's going to be expressed yeah you know yeah. so if somebody watching this actually has the BRCA genes and they were told they have the BRCA genes and and they were recommended the mastectomies or hysterectomies um, would you say that they have to work harder on cleaning the, the swamp and and uh, reducing waste than somebody who doesn't carry the, the gene? Yes, I, I think so, because th they they cannot afford a, a somatic mutation. Uh, you know, whereas a person who doesn't have that gene could probably get a few different somatic mutations that are, yes, are going and to... get away with that. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and get away with it, yeah. But, yeah. Um, but uh, again, 97% of the people that, that have uh, breast cancer didn't have the gene, yes. so let's keep that in mind. Yes, yes, yes. Very, very interesting, Dr. Ladi. Thank you so much. In future episodes, I want to talk about also the contents of that swamp that we create yeah. uh, that yeah. promotes, you know, it could be uh, food decisions, but it could also be emotional on, on that side of, of things. You could create all kinds of waste emotionally as well. So we'll talk about that in another episode. Thank you so much You're um, welcome. Thank you. for your rich conversation, rich, rich answers. Um, شكرا لمتابعتكم وإذا عجبتكم الحلقة حطوا لنا لايك لا تنسون تشتركون في القناة وحطوا لنا أسئلتكم أيضا في التعليقات عشان في الحلقات المستقبلية إن شاء الله نجاوب الأسئلة اللي انتوا سألتوها شكرا لمتابعتكم <تصفيق>